Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of TMI's 365. In today's lesson, I'm going to be covering the updates from September 2021 from Microsoft. If you watch my update videos in the past, you know I focus in on the updates that are relevant to the MSP space, block out all the noise from the hundred or so announcements they come out with each month, and really try to help you be more proactive with your end users. Diving right into it here, we'll start off with Microsoft Teams. This first one here is related to the content from Camera now launched into Teams. So essentially what this is doing is allowing you to present from a camera view, which can detect things like a whiteboard, for instance, or maybe a document that you're showing on your camera. And it can present that on top of the screen versus you sharing your screen directly. Um, so this is giving you a little bit more flexibility. It will be interesting to see what the quality looks like and what the detection looks like from a whiteboard perspective. But this will come out in late September and be complete by early October. Next here, reply to specific chat messages in desktop teams. This feature was available already on Android and iOS devices in the mobile experience, but it's basically just giving you the ability to reply directly to a message here, and this would really help you out in group chat versus just one-on-one -on -one chat. That'll happen in mid-September and be complete by early October. Next one here, real-time data for Microsoft Teams meetings in the Teams Admin Center. This is giving you real-time telemetry that is updated every 30 seconds in the admin center that will help you look at certain events from a network perspective related to audio or video issues that users may be experiencing. This might help you diagnose issues a little bit better or troubleshoot with the users if they're experiencing bad network quality. This will be happening mid-September and be complete in late September. Next one here, Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows. If you're not using Teams Rooms today in a physical meeting room, then this is not really going to be relevant to you. But essentially here, they're going to align this experience much like your desktop experience as well. We have the familiar features such as the spotlight capabilities, the ability to perform actions against users, the ability to see the reactions, everything like that. So this will happen in late September and should be complete by mid-October. Shifting into Microsoft SharePoint here, Viva Connections is something that's really new for Microsoft. They have many different modules as part of Microsoft Viva and Connections is one of them. I like to think of this as more of a modern SharePoint page, which is pre-configured with a lot of settings for you and also natively has an app that's published within Teams that you can leverage on a mobile device as well too. It can share a lot of relevant data to the user. It can be a feed that has a little bit more intelligence than you're familiar with with SharePoint, which is related to the most popular content within the organization, but might be also the group membership a user is part of things like that. Um, so lots of documentation here you can sift through. I'll link that below in the overall guide of all these announcements that I always publish as well. So you guys can see more information there. This will happen September 9th and it'll be completed as far as the public preview goes by September 20th. Note that, that there is some pre-configuration that you have to do in order to get this set up. So take a look at that guide. Microsoft Exchange, two big announcements here for end of life. Microsoft's been updating us on basic auth end of life for about every month now, I would say, or every couple months. But they've picked a definitive date here where they're gonna permanently disable basic auth and all Microsoft tenants, which will be in October of 2022. Scope includes all of those protocols that you see down below, like IMAP, POP, Remote PowerShell, MAPI, e, etc. The only other thing to note here though is that beginning in 2022, they're gonna be selectively picking tenants and they'll disable basic auth for those protocols except for SMTP auth for a period of 12 to 48 hours. So you would want to go ahead and take some action here really to identify any legacy auth going on within your tenants. While SMTP auth is not gonna be shut off in the near term, it will be shut off as far as in October of 2022. So what I would recommend is checking out the documentation again that I have, which relates to compensating for SMTP auth by using direct send or something like that if you're using it for copiers or printers, things of that nature, as well as taking a look at any ticketing system that uses IMAP as well too. So just taking a lot of precautions here to make sure you don't have any disruption in service. Next, the Classic Exchange Admin Center is retiring as well too. You probably have seen or are already using the new Exchange Admin Center here, which has more of that modern look and feel the rest of the Admin Centers are moving to. They are gonna be deprecating that in September, so next year, but it is important to note that as of October 15th of this year, 
they're going to move all the protection and advanced threat features into the Microsoft 365 Defender portal. So that would include things like safe attachments, safe links, all the components that mainly come with Defender for Office 365, as well as the anti-phishing, anti-malware policies that you might create as well too if you're not on that plan. So just take note of that. Last one here for Exchange, the Domain Keys Identify Mail support for advanced delivery is basically allowing you to customize advanced delivery for domains that use DKIM and that gives you the ability to use them and configure them for third-party phishing simulations versus trying to leverage just Microsoft's phishing simulation for the domains that you have DKIM set up with. So just enhancing that experience and giving you some more flexibility there. That'll happen in late September and be complete by early October. The final one here, this is some big heavy news that's been rippling throughout the community here related to new commerce experience. I made a whole video and blog on this. It's a lot to unpack, so I definitely check out the, those resources there to get a little bit more information. But essentially here, Microsoft is basically pushing you into an annual contract for their services here because the month-to-month -month contract is going to be a 20% increase in price. In addition to that, they are removing the prorated cancellation feature or functionality after the first 72 hours. So they're making it so that you don't really decrease during your term. And then lastly, they're also increasing the price of all of the SKUs starting in March of 2022. So not only if you stayed on month to month would you have a 20% increase, but you're also gonna have a 15% on top of that. So 35% all together when you combine those two. So heavy announcements here, again, there's a lot to unpack. It's gonna to start to be sold next month, and then in March you're gonna be forced to move all of your SKUs to this modern offering. So your distributor that you're working with today should be able to help you out in navigating the complexity here, but overall it's not a really good move for the CSP program, so kind of disappointed. But hopefully we start seeing some traction, Microsoft listening to the community and kind of the backlash that they've experienced up to this point in time with this announcement. That's everything that I want to showcase for you guys in today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.